Hello there and welcome back. As you can see from the title, today's video is going to be a little bit of insight about cabin crew, the requirements of becoming cabin crew if it's something you're interested in, a little bit about the training and then whatever else I fancy rambling on about. First, before we get into the video, I wanted to just introduce myself as I realised I hadn't done it in my last video. So my name's Danielle, I'm 28 and I'm cu currently cabin crew. Um, I've been cabin crew on and off for about 10 years now and I love it and the airline I'm with will be my last airline because um, I love it there and I just could not be bothered doing that training again so that's a little bit about me uh, let's get to the video so firstly I'm going to start with the requirements and what you need and what you need to have achieved um, in order to be able to apply to become cabin crew. Um, there's quite a few things, they do vary from airline to airline so if it's something you're interested in then you really need to research it and go for an airline which better suits you. First of all you have to be of a certain age. Some airlines in the UK like you to be 18 and over, some like you to be 19 and in the Middle East it tends to be over 21. There are a few other requirements and these are um, sort of like your physical fitness if you like so I'm not saying you need to go to the gym and you need to work out seven days a week and you need to you know build up your muscle strength I'm not talking about that it's things like being able to push a trolley push and pull a trolley being able to get a canister out being physically fit and being able to be capable to do the role of cabin crew um, there is a height restriction and a height minimum so most of the airlines it varies five foot is the minimum to about five foot two and then the maximum is about six foot five to six foot seven so you need to be able to swim some airlines like you to be able to swim a distance which is about 25 meters but most of the time it's being able to just swim a certain length. You have to have a passport, a valid passport, it has to have at least 12 months on that passport. Um, you have to be able to obtain and retain an airside pass. Um, with the airside pass, you will have to do a criminal record check. You'll have to do referencing, so for the criminal record check and your airside pass. Now, the referencing for your airside pass is goes as far back as five years. Um, and that is what you, basically you were doing prior to joining the airline. The referencing can be very tricky um, and long-winded. And that you'll only do that for your airside pass if you are successful from the application and they give you a start date and you've started it can get tricky but persevere with it you will get it done um, but it, it might just take a long time to do it obviously you have to be able to in the UK um, speak English and be able to write in English that's a requirement um, same goes for the um, Middle East Airlines, I had a little look, Etihad and Emirates asked for that. Other airlines for the likes of Lufthansa and Air France, I'm pretty sure you'd have to speak English and then the native language. Some airlines don't like you to have visible tattoos or visible piercings. Um, some airlines won't even let you get past the application stage if you do have a tattoo they can be that strict you are successful and you do get through to the interview just make sure you cover up those tattoos and just make sure you take out any extra piercings apart from just the one in each year you're allowed another thing that is a requirement is GCSEs a lot of airlines like you to have at least three A to C grades in your GCSEs or equivalent so if you're in school now make sure you get them if it's something you're wanting to pursue so I think that's it for all the requirements for airlines like I said have a little look online if it's something you're interested in doing make sure you meet all the um, requirements before you do apply because if there's any kind of aspect that you don't they will just not process the application now I'll tell you a little bit about the inter interview process each airline is different obviously um, but mostly there is they'll start off with the height test reach test and your it's not a physical test but they'll get you to sort of like push a trolley get a canister out just to show that you are capable of doing the role of cabin crew if you pass all them then great you'll go on to the next round if you like and that will probably be something like a group exercise and um, they'll get a few of you together and they'll give you some kind of scenario that you've got to all work together and achieve a outcome that you all agree is right. If you're successful then there'll probably be some kind of role play which is just yourself and one of the assessors will 
for example, be pretend to be a difficult passenger and they'll throw all kinds of things at you for it for say example, um, they're pretending to be a drunk passenger. They want to see how you react with that and what you say and how you can defuse that situation. If you're successful with that, then you'll go on to the interview process. And normally it's um, a two to one interview and in that time they will just ask you everything they want to ask you what companies you've worked for and then they'll go into questions about customer service tell me a time about when you've given great customer service tell me a time when you've had to deal with a difficult customer or you've been put in a difficult situation things like that and it normally goes on probably for about 30 minutes maybe a little bit longer depending on how chatty you are and that should be the end of the day Certain airlines, if you don't get past the state of stage, they will send you home after that. Some airlines just do the whole thing and then assess you as a whole. They will tell you all this. If you are successful and they give you an interview date, you will get some kind of um, package in the, in the post and it will give you all kinds of details or an email and it will give you everything you need to know, everything you need to bring with you for that day for the assessment. Preparation is key for the interview. Make sure you really work on it and um, give yourself a good few weeks to work on some kind of answers to potential questions they could ask you. Make sure you've got lots of examples of customer service. Um, use examples of customer ex experience you've had when it might have been bad or when it's been really good so make sure you're fully prepared and that you've got an answer for every question they ask you. If you are successful from the interview you will then be given a start date. Now this start date will vary to whether they have a high demand for cabin crew. When you start um, that's when the application for your airside pass will start so that's when you'll need to do your criminal record check and that's when you'll need to get all your references in order so that they can start with the process for your airside pass. Most airlines do a six weeks course and it's a very intense six weeks course it needs all your dedication all your time and all your effort um, it's hard going there will be you'll be given so much information that you've got to remember so you really need to focus and give it your all they start off with sep which is safety and emergency procedures so after you've done that section there'll be an exam after you've done your first aid there'll be an exam after you've done your customer service there'll be an exam so to go on to the next round, if you like, of the um, course, you'll have to pass the exams. So normally it would start off with the aircraft types. Now, depending on what airline you're going for will depend on the type of aircrafts you will be trained on. So they will give you all the information you need to know about those aircrafts you'll be on. The doors, where the equipment is, things about the flight deck, um, general things in the cabin, you will be given all that information. We'll then probably go on to um, first aid. So this section will be anything from helping someone to give birth to knowing the F um, CPR procedure. You will learn every sign and symptom of most illnesses. You'll be able to recognize them and you will know the contents of your first aid kits. And then after that, it will be customer service so again depending on the airline depending on how in depth they go if you get that far and you've passed all your exams and you've been given your wings and you've got your roster and you go out online just enjoy it it's an incredible job I absolutely love it um, it can be very challenging at times but that's like any job you've got your ups and you've got your downs so really go out and enjoy it I'll just give you a little bit of information now about flying and um, if some people are unsure about different types of flying so there's short haul and long haul now short haul is basically there and backs and by there and backs I mean you would leave your base say London Gatwick you would leave there you would then go to Paris and then back to London Gatwick that's a there and back some short haul airlines do night stops so for example you might do London Gatwick Paris back to Gatwick and then you might go on to Amsterdam for the night and then back to Gatwick the next day then long haul is basically um, where you will say where you will always get off at the end of the flight so for example you would do from your base say London to 
New York and then you would get some airlines do minimum risk which could be as short as 12 hours but normally you would get between 20 to 24 hours in the in the destinations and then back some destinations you will get longer depending on the um, distance of that destination so for example if you're going to the far east like Tokyo then you'll probably get two or three nights there and that will be classed as either a four or five day trip if you are thinking about becoming cabin crew and it's something you really want to do you really need to have a think about whether you want to go short haul or long haul. Now, if you are someone who loves your home comforts, you like being home every night and you would miss your family if you were away, then probably short haul is the best option for you. If you're someone who wants to see the world and doesn't care about being away for weeks on end, then go for long haul. See the world, you'll love it. My advice would be if you're just starting out with flying, to maybe, and you're a little unsure whether you want to do long haul or short haul, maybe go for an airline that is doing a contract for a summer season. So a summer season normally runs from April to October and that's their busiest time and this is for short haul. So that's normally their busiest time of flying. So for example, short haul airlines in the UK are your EasyJet, Ryanair, Monarch, Flybe, and I'm sure there's others. They will do summer seasons because they've got a higher demand for cabin crew in those months because they're busier. So give that a go. That gives you a good insight to the job and it, you know, by the end of it, you'll know whether you love it or hate it. If you did love it at the end, but you want a bit more of it, then maybe you could apply for a long haul airline and then get to see a bit more of the world. Um, that's what I did when I started. I started off with an airline that did that contracted me for the summer. I did short haul, no night stops, just did there and back. And I loved it. I was 18, really enjoyed it and thought this is what I want to do. I then went on after that to apply for a long haul airline. Went there, did the training and I lasted about six months. And I ended up leaving because I thought this isn't for me. I was 19 at the time. I didn't like being away from home. I was doing a really big commute to work. So I ended up leaving after six months. And then once I left, I really regretted it. Um, I missed the job. I missed being away. So I then thought, right, I'm going to give the summer season short haul another go. So I went to another airline, I did the six month summer season there and thought yes this is what I want to do definitely. I was that little bit older and then I applied for another airline and I've been with that airline nearly five years and I love it. If you do just go straight in and go for a long haul airline, please please give it more than six months. That's the best advice I can give you because you really really don't have an idea of the job and you're really not settled in after six months because it's a big change you know you can be getting up at 3 a.m. one morning to do a Dusseldorf there and back or if you're long you know you could be working right through the night and your body really needs to adjust to it and you need to give time for yourself to settle in I think that's about it really if you've got any questions at all um, about the role Please comment down below if there's anything that I've not gone over that you're thinking about, comment down below, I'll definitely get back to you. Or I'm on Instagram at Fly Life Danny or Twitter at Fly Life Danny. Go over there, follow me. I'm not always gonna focus on cabin crew. I've got one lined up to do a bit of a beauty haul. So if that's something you're interested in, then keep watching, subscribe so that you get a notification of when I've uploaded another video. Um, Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!